The way I would look at it is we're where we are now before there was Windows. <laughs> so right now, anybody who wants to be involved in this basically has to be a programmer. Right. If you want to create your own token or a DAO or whatever, you've got to know a whole bunch of different programming languages and it's complex. But soon, to, to take part in this, there'll be effectively like an operating system like Windows, but for, um, for NFT ownership and tokenizing things. And that then means anybody can do it. Welcome to The Future Of, a podcast by Fresh Consulting, where we discuss and learn about the future of different industries, markets, and technology verticals. Together, we'll chat with leaders and experts in the field and discuss how we can shape the future human experience. I'm your host, Jeff Dance. In this episode of The Future Of, we're joined by Dudley Neville Spencer of Virtual Influencer Agency and Johnny Rodriguez from Fresh Consulting to explore the future of the metaverse. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you with me on this episode uh, focused on the metaverse, and we're excited to have not only two leaders, but serious two serious technology evangelists that think about and really work on the future. As far as uh, uh, just a quick intro, uh, Dudley founded the, the Virtual Influencer Agency, the world's first virtual influencer avatar and metaverse marketing agency, where he's head of research and virtual development. He's also an expert uh, research and technology director at the Live and Breathe Agency, which has been around for 30 years. Um, he leads avatar and metaverse integration strategies there, in addition to uh, AI and data insights. Uh, we've listened to some of his webinars on the metaverse, uh, NFTs, and virtual humans. So we're, we're excited to have him. He was recently named uh, one of the top 50 players in the, the world of influencer marketing. And he likes to tell everyone that ADD is his superpower. Bring it so on! We definitely, we definitely want to ask him about that. Uh, next up, we have Johnny Rodriguez, who is the director of innovation at Fresh Consulting with a background in UX design and software development. Kind of a rare, uh, rare breed of two uh, amazing skill sets. Uh, Johnny's teams are responsible for working on testing, developing what's next in the technology realm. Um, in the process, they're designing and building and deploying internal and external facing products. Some of his innovative work involves uh, AR, VR, AI, robotics, uh, web and mobile development, chatbots, and more. He's also a real human <laughs> and has been a professional beatboxer. Uh, he's been a singer in our, our very own fresh band and outside of work, uh, really enjoys spending time with his, his wife, Alyssa, and his three kids. Johnny, great to have you. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate being here. Excited to get your insights since you've been uh, uh, deep in this space for kind of the last four years. And hopefully some dope beats too, Johnny. Seriously, can you give us a, a little beatbox <laughs> to kind of some intro music to the to the episode? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll throw something down really quick. Let's do a, a little something here. Um... I don't know. There you go. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to leave now because that's just it. That's <laughs> like, um, there's nothing I can say that's going to be more exciting than that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And we're going to have to use that for uh, our podcast intro music. <laughs> well, it's amazing to have you uh, both here to again to talk about the future of the metaverse. Uh, let's dive right in. First, we want to talk just about kind of the 101 uh, for those that are new to the topic, then uh, talk a little bit about the future and kind of jump back to the present. So for those that are kind of new to this concept, we've heard, we've seen a lot in the news, really. What is the metaverse? At its simplest form, it's a way of you as a human being able to interact from a first person point of view or as an avatar with other humans in digital realms. That could be through AR, could be through VR or from your desktop. In a slightly more complicated manner, it's come to mean universes which are continuous. So that is when you jump out of them and come back in, they're still there, that the world is as it was when you left it and other people are in there. Um, but that's it in general. 
Wow, I love that. I don't know how much I would add to that. I loved that uh, the convergence. Uh, you mentioned some of the uh, some of the different devices that you might use, the mediums by which you can be in the metaverse, right? So I do like that convergence of the the physical, augmented, and virtual reality in that kind of shared online space. I think people make a mistake thinking it's one thing. It's only VR. It's only that, and it's not. That the whole point is that you can be in and out of it in practically any way you like. So it's really flexible. Definitely. And kind of how you engage is what, is what you're saying. Yeah, completely. Yeah, completely. So, uh, and, you know, you, you'll read in a lot of media, they're always talking about um, VR and does everybody want to be in VR all the time? And VR is extremely important for the future of the metaverse, but it, it, you don't have to be in VR. You know, I mean, when I'm playing on Decentraland and Somnium or whatever, I'm never in VR on those. Um, and you can be, and it's, an, it's a richer experience, but a lot of people tend to talk about not wanting to do it because they're not sure about VR, but that's actually almost completely irrelevant. You know, social's still massively important, you know, and we, we, we talk about social when we're making avatars as the place where you can almost talk about the history of your personality. So you can almost show on your socials where you've come from, who you are, you know, what's important to you, and then in a verse... Uh, so in a continuous verse where you are there and you are present, um, that's for engaging with in that moment. It's not for necessarily posting content that talks about what you've done. So there are two. One's almost what's happened and who you are, and one is where you are right now. And the, that's both really important. I think for a lot of people, it's still sort of an abstract concept if they haven't really experienced it. Uh, obviously, you know, the metaverse kind of has been around for a little bit, as I understand it, it the, the term was coined in uh, Neil Stevenson's science fiction novel in 1992. Uh, but there, you know, there's a lot of hype right now about this this uh, this concept and this this new frontier. Uh, what are some of the big players in the space right now? Yeah, it's been interesting to watch this over, uh, especially over the last few years, but even just the last few months, we've seen Facebook announce their brand change, their brand name from Facebook to Meta. Uh, you know, they're spending millions of dollars last year, $18.5 million. Uh, this year, they're, they're claiming they're going to hit 10, 10 billion alone for just this division, um, creating 10,000 jobs in, the, in, the, uh, in, in Europe uh, to help kind of build the, the metaverse. Um, so there's a lot of investment, you know, and software perspective coming from, from Meta. Um, so they're definitely a player. Um, they, they claim that here in the, in the next five years, they're going to be a metaverse, metaverse first company. So that's definitely a bigger one. And there's specific uh, things that they're building there, like Horizon. It's been interesting to see some of the stuff there. Horizon Home, uh, Horizon Worlds, Workrooms, uh, Marketplace, all different uh, elements of Horizon. And so it'll be interesting to see what kind of comes from there. But if you just take a step back from them, um, if you think about what you know, Fortnite and Roblox has done and thinking about them as a, as a, as a, as a form of, uh, their games, uh, definitely their games. And, you know, Fortnite has something like 350 million users, you know, 3 billion hours every month that people are spending in their games. But, uh, what's interesting is that there are live events happening in Fortnite, right? Travis Scott did a show, 12 million users earned $20 million. I'm um, just a small example there of, of, uh, of Fortnite, right? And consuming entertainment in kind of this virtual environment. Think about what Epic Games has from an Unreal Engine, right? Their, their, uh, their actual game engine and used in popular shows like The Mandalorian. I really like that one. Lion King. And uh, they have MetaHuman, which I know, Dudley, you've done some stuff with MetaHuman. It's a beast. It's a beautiful beast. You need a massive, massive machine to use it. <laughs> you can't use it on a Mac because it's so big but it is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I it's been really interesting some of the stuff that's coming with with MetaHuman. So yeah, that's Epic Epic Games. There's a lot more coming from from them. Roblox is a is a, essentially a, a game, but they have, essentially have a virtual world on top of their game. It's kind of that Lego brick style, not as rich as what you would see in something like Fortnite. But uh they're in the 40 million user range and uh you know, if you think about Gen Z, that's they're spending a lot of time there. And it's a you know forty five billion dollar publicly traded company, um, but again, where it kind of connects to the metaverse is right is they have they have digital they have digital currency they have digital ad assets um, that they're selling. So you have things like Gucci bags being sold for four thousand you know U S dollars. 
you know, they have a $300 million fund. Virtual Gucci bags. A virtual Gucci bag that you can have as yeah. an accessory to build as a self-expression from this kind of virtual world, right? Again, blocky kind of Lego brick style kind of blocks with a Gucci bag and you're paying $4,000, right? The equivalent of $4,000. They have this $300 million fund that they're giving to creators. So I guess they gave creators uh, last year in 2020. And uh, they're kind of encouraging the building of this community, right? And they also have entertainment, right? They've had uh, Lil Nas X. They've had, uh, um, you know, has been watched, consumed 37 million times. Um, so it's just been interesting to watch some of that. Dudley, you mentioned Decentraland. I've, I'm really excited and have been really, really interested in, in, and have been following pretty closely some of the stuff happening there. They're a pretty big player in the metaverse. I think that's probably probably one of the closer ones that gets there, right? Uh, again, not not VR, AR. It's not necessarily how you would go in and uh, and kind of participate in their virtual environments, but uh, you are consuming it from your kind of your PC, your computer, kind of in a two D format. But just to give you a sense of that, right? It's like I think it was just a few days ago that I read this. I've been keeping up on this in the last few months, but five hundred square feet, right? They call them parcels. A virtual real estate was just sold, I think, yesterday for 2.43 million US dollars in decentralized. Yeah, it was a crypto real estate fund that bought it. Yep. So yep. you, you have this group. Yeah, fund management companies who are just investing in land in different verses, which people find bizarre. But, you know, in, in um, one which we are working a lot within is called Somnium Space, and it's very similar to Decentraland. But you can buy three different parcels of land, small, medium, large, what, four, small, medium, large, and extra large. And they're defined by the height with which you can build. So if you want to build a 100-meter tower, you've got to buy extra large. Small is 10 meters. And depending where they are in the land, if you're by the beach, it's really expensive. If you're, you know, back in the middle of nowhere, it's cheaper. But an example of the pricing, and it's changing all the time, is... Um, you have to... Somnium Cubes is the token. You buy them in in Somnium space. And just today we were looking at buying a piece of land for a client there and a small space we couldn't get for cheaper than 13,000 US. <laughs> that was, yeah. and that wasn't even in a good spot, you know? It's interesting. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's what I've been looking at. And it's been interesting because they are, uh, they have, they're, they're also that open. You're talking about Somnium space, but they're that open kind of social virtual environment, but they have a VR component to theirs, which is yes. where, where it starts to get into that interesting area of yes. like, now you're kind of in that fully immersed experience. Yeah. Well, you know, you were talking about uh, Meta before. We think Meta have the, but they have the biggest ecosystem. You know, it's like they have, you know, Zuckerberg did a brilliant job of explaining the ecosystem, which no one's done before and has helped us brilliantly. So thank you. <laughs> um, but, um, but then when you look within each little component along that ecosystem, there are players who have just been focusing on, on little bits. So no one has an ecosystem like Meta. But if you look, for example, at Somnium's VR, so they're a blockchain space, which means that every asset that you see you can buy be it the, the the land or the houses or the or the vehicles or whatever and you can do that in vr which is which is kind of amazing <laughs> yeah definitely i find that really interesting the the element of the 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 nft i mean i think uh i think it was uh somnium space that has it was their ethereum base right yeah, I mean, mo most of them, they create their own tokens, but use uh, Ethereum. So Somnium Cubes is the token, but it uses the it uses Ethereum as its translating token and as its, as its blockchain. And similarly, Mana, which is the, the token for Decentraland, um, similar thing that's also based on Ethereum as well. So we have these different spaces, essentially, in the metaverse. How do you access these spaces for those that uh, are new to it? Well, the easiest way to do it is start by doing it just from your desktop. Just type in one of their names, hit enter, and then it will say, do you want to create an avatar of yourself? Do you want to come in and have a look? And you can go in there and walk around as a simple avatar. Some of them you can upload images of yourself and it will convert for you. And you can basically use your mouse point and click and walk around. Um, if you want to transact within those blockchain verses, then you have to have a wallet and you have to buy the tokens, which then allows you to buy the assets. Or you can go to somewhere like Coinbase, which kind of makes it easy for you. 
But that's only the blockchain verses, because, of course, then the other verses that, you know, Johnny was talking about, like Roblox, uh, you know, they have their own Robux, which isn't a crypto token it is you buy them with cash and you, you transact with dollars effectively but they call them robux so there's yep. many verses in the metaverse just to kind of summarize and uh mark has uh made a big statement of kind of renaming the facebook universe as meta and bringing with him billions of users that can kind of access and kind of br- help help bring people into kind of these these, these mixed reality worlds essentially but yeah. the easiest way to access them, you can access them online. But if you're in VR, you can also access them there. And there's also, you know, the AR aspect. Can you speak to that, uh, Johnny at all, or or Dudley on the the AR aspect? It was interesting to see uh, how Mark Zuckerberg kind of presented that as part of the ecosystem of of spaces and hardware that might be used as part of the metaverse. And um, it was talked about as kind of hologram hologram based. Um, but I think as it relates to the metaverse, where my thinking is, is that uh, as it relates to communication and interaction, there will be elements where AR, right, essentially being able to take a, a, a virtual conference call will happen in VR. But from an AR perspective, instead of it being in a virtual environment, it'll be kind of next to you or in front of you or beside you. And you'll, you might have kind of collaborative section, uh, sessions where there'll be some some virtual you know, some physically present and kind of just a mixture, that hybrid of what we call now, right, with the pandemic of this kind of hybrid workplace or hybrid environment or hybrid communication. I think uh, in the future, it will be very much a a combination of that physical, augmented and virtual. So I I could see that being a big part um, as it relates to, to AR, but also AR being kind of an entry point to the metaverse as well, where you might still get uh, informative kind of information of like if something sold or if you if you won the auction, if you're buying an NFT art or uh, things like that, or being able to kind of continue conversations. You might be in the metaverse to start conversations and then you're going to be on the go and augmented reality would kind of be like the, the heads up display version of that where communication might continue or you might continue a phone call and, and be driving your car and still see kind of people off to the side or, um, you know, things like that. Well, I mean, on the, you know, I think on the AR side, I mean, you are infinitely more (laughs) qualified than I am since you're actually making the stuff. But I mean, I know, I know where, where it comes to, um, where it comes to how the verses are integrating with it, for example. And if you look at Meta's Oculus, which is by far the biggest VR, if you're talking VR, by far the biggest consumer VR brand out there, you know, you're seeing, and this I think leans into, Zuckerberg's idea of being interoperable, so not running a walled garden and not saying, you know, you can only be in, in Meta's world. There are loads of other verses and you should go to all of them. And so my understanding that the founder of Somnium Space, which is a really good blockchain verse, he's releasing an app um, which will be a Somnium Space on uh, on Oculus Quest. Um, and I think that is, that's Meta being true to its interoperable um suggestion for the future and i think you see lots of that but i think somnium are the first one to do that on oculus which is pretty cool but that that's definitely where it's all going to go so in that situation like as you said johnny you can you can be on your desktop you know looking at art or whatever in a space looking at nfts in a space you can then try and transact or bid for it or whatever or be talking to a friend walk out and that chat continues on your phone it can happen in ar if you want um and then that evening, you can go in and check everything out on your on your Oculus and, and and be immersed in that particular world. So that that's how it is. It's not one or the other. It's the whole lot. And how is this different uh, than what we have today? Uh, like, what are some of the key differentiators that kind of define the metaverse of today, or you know, define the metaverse and the changes that will happen? There's that great quote from William Gibson, which always says that the technology is there. It's just not distributed yet. And I think in a, in a lot of ways, when if, if people, you know, go on into these worlds that have never been onto them, they'll be amazed at what's happening. You know, there was a conversation in the press saying, you know, is the metaverse a real thing? And you had a lot of uh, journalists saying it wasn't. <laughs> they have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, you ask practically anybody under 25 and they're like, I'm in the middle of us every day. What, 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 you know, what are these boomers talking about? Um, so that isn't even a question. Um, for the future, I mean, 
I mean, what I'm really excited about is the advancements within AI. We we create avatars. That's our that's our business, right? Creating avatars. And what I'm really excited about is when AR can get to a point where your avatar can actually engage with other avatars and can, while you're not using it, do work for you. It can find the music you like. It can perhaps see people, oh Dudley, this person's into this, this and this. I think that, you know, you might really like them. It can effectively be your surrogate when you're not there. That is something which I think is a long way in the future, but that's something I'm super, super excited about is actually having an agent that works for you. At its simplest form, it's something like Google Duplex where it will ring up you know, a restaurant and book for you. <laughs> but there's absolutely no reason that you can't give an AI all of your information. Keep it. it. doesn't have to be in the cloud. It can be on your desktop. Keep it. And then it will go out and find and interact for you uh, and find what you want. Let's talk about that more. You're kind of bringing us into the future. Uh, you know, many of us have seen Ready Player One, which kind of tries to, it paints this vision of like being in the physical world, going into a virtual world. It's not quite the metaverse in that, you kind of bring the world back to you, right? It's like you're really going into these virtual worlds and you have your own agent per se. In Ready Player One, it's not it's not an agent that's, as you said, doing work for you or getting stuff done maybe while you're sleeping, which sounds awesome. <laughs> but if we, if we project to the future, you know, Ready Player One was uh, supposedly filmed in 2045. So let's take the year 2045. What does the metaverse look like, you know, 20 roughly 23 years from now. Yeah, so I think the AI agents are massive things. So avatar, to, so AI avatar to AI avatar, that's def, that's 20 that's 20 years in the future. But that's massive. That's that's a, a whole new way of existing because that's taking the executive functioning of your brain and 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 doing that job for you. You still make all the decisions, but I think that that's that's an exciting really exciting component. But then if you look at some of the mirror world technology so we've been talking about uh, a lot about effectively fantasy verses in in one way but if you look at other technology companies like um like nvidia and what they focus on is mirroring entire factories like they've mirrored the entire uh bmw factory in real time um and they are bringing out product that maps the real world and i think being able to have your augmented or mixed reality eyewear on, you know, like your um, like your traditional glasses that look like sunglasses, but having a true digital overlay where you're in the real world, but every, there is information on everything, that is definitely, I think, where we will all be. But perhaps in 25 years, it might actually be by um, effectively a contact lens which does that for you. I mean, figuring out how you power that is difficult. There are definitely, I know there are some, you know, some universities doing that at the moment, trying to make it work. But of course, it's very, very low power. <laughs> but 25 years, I could see the, uh, you know, you have your, your your lens on and and there's information on everything, there's whatever whatever you want. Um, that, that, I think, is 25 years from now, for sure. Let me piggyback off that a little bit. I love that. I, I agree. I think the virtual and the physical kind of worlds will be blended. I think it will be commonplace. I do think that we will have the everyday comfortable and normal looking in, in quotation marks there, uh, AR glasses or contact lenses. I agree with that. I do think that that will be commonplace. We will get, we'll, we'll, we'll have a lot of that, but I do think that the, the kind of more mature metaverse will, will be, will be very present in our lives. That'll turn into so many new jobs. And, and I think that'll be in a lot of different industries and, and types of businesses. Uh, but I think what we see, you know, if you think about how much uh, video conferencing accelerated during the pandemic, the amount of companies that came out from that, or how quickly you think about the number of updates that came out for Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet and how that accelerated due to the kind of the environment, right? When we have the metaverse and and we have consumer friendly, affordable, uh, ergonomic VR headsets and normal looking AR glasses, the acceleration I think will drastically increase. Um, and so we're going to see a lot of that become a lot more normal. It'll be normal to take, to take, uh, 
you know, uh, conference calls in, in 2d or 3d, whether that's AR or VR, I think that'll be completely commonplace and you'll, you'll get used to seeing your, your dad as an avatar sometimes, or sometimes seeing in a, in a 3d kind of hologram form or 2d what we see right now, you know, for, for this particular uh, recording. And so we'll see a lot more of that. I think the way we see remote employees today, right? Uh, I'm, I'm an employee that's uh, technically not at our home office. I'm in Austin, Texas. And so I'm at, I'm at my own home office right now, but I think that it'll be very common place to have virtual a virtual office where all of our remote remote employees will be, it'll be common place to be able to kind of just pop on and, and be able to interact and collaborate and, and do that in, in this kind of uh, physical or virtual uh, realm and it'll be just completely commonplace for us in the same way that it is for us to to go from 2007 getting the introduction to the smartphone and, and now you know in a way we're cyborgs right where it's it's like yeah. we have all this access to technology and what we have on our wrist is what 10,000 30,000 times better computing power than what we sent people up to the moon with like so i think 25 25 years from now would be really it's a it's going to be a really exciting time and uh, gen z will be what uh, 35, 45 years old, right? The people that kind of grow up with Roblox and, and Fortnite right now as nine to 24 year olds. And, and, uh, so it'll be interesting. I mean, I'm, um, I'm heavily encouraging my seven year old to get into 3d modeling. <laughs> and, uh, I haven't quite got her onto Maya yet, but Tinkercad and things like that, because, um, you know, that is going to, I think that's going to take over film, television, and all media, the size of that industry, and, and very, very quickly. Wow. Yeah, that's a very, very good point. It's a good parallel to kind of thinking about, you know, what smartphones have done yeah. for business, for humanity, for better, for worse, right? They've changed this in a dramatic way. And if we think about the future being having a, this tipping point, this where where you have something as simple as a contact lens or really uh, you know non-invasive sort of uh, glasses or mm. super super cheap headsets where everyone has one like almost everyone has a smartphone whether you go into the even some of the poorest countries in the world they still have smartphones that they're buying for thirty forty dollars right so yeah. having this tipping point where we give everyone access to these virtual worlds that are massive marketplaces right now already yeah uh, I can see how this can converge in a, in a quick way, especially if you think forward, you know, to, to the year 2045, whereas look, we've only had smartphones for like 12 years and look how that's changed our universe yeah. Uh, yeah. completely. Uh, so I, I think if we put ourselves into that future, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting to think about the confluence of work yeah. that, you know, we know, uh, we all feared the computer you know, dozens of years ago and how that would change work. And it did, you know, we have, we now have five to one sort of knowledge workers versus physical workers. Right. Um, but as we think about the workplace, you'd mentioned kind of going to work in the virtual world, um, especially for this convergence of sort of remote or hybrid work environments. Tell us more about how industries and businesses might change or how they might transact educational, the educational space, the real estate space, the entertainment space, business. Can, can you guys uh, share more examples or help us think about how that could change? Yeah. Yeah. Well, from a, from a marketing perspective, if you, if you boil it down to its absolute simplest, uh, NFTs or the ability to tokenize and identify any digital asset has already created a multi-billion dollar industry which will very soon be a multi-trillion dollar industry and i think will overtake the asset value of the real world which people think is nuts when you say it but it's it's not <laughs> it's not it's not nuts because these these places are are places where brands get to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with an audience. So it's very different from um, a social media channel or something like Google where everything is actually completely controlled by the proprietor. When you're in it, you're in it as a brand, you are with the people. It's like having your own event and inviting people in your own space. That's a very different way of engaging with a consumer. When brands really figure that out, they'll go all in because they don't have that at the moment apart from inviting them into their store 
So I think when brands figure that out, I think all the money will flood into it and that will completely change retail dynamics. But that's just one, that's just one area. Oh, I love, I love hearing that. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think uh, as, as you were mentioning, so I, I think some of the ones you mentioned, Jeff, were, were education and entertainment. I think you said uh, a few others there, but those did st- stand out to me because I do think that uh, as it relates to, to education, I do think that we're going to see, uh, um, we're seeing, we're seeing again. Pandemic has accelerated a lot of things. We saw the the fact that uh, not only can we trust employees, but we can entrust, we can we can trust students to learn. Uh, that's obviously been difficult for some, and uh, pr- probably a bigger transition for others. But it's ac- accelerated, and it's also proved that that is possible. That you can do a virtual virtual schooling that normally always happened in person uh, can be done in a two D. Uh, environment. And I think we will see uh, education. Uh, th- there, will, there will be, I think it's ripe for innovation as it relates to the metaverse and how you might uh, learn different topics and, and go through your standard K through 12 or, or college kind of uh, classes. I think there'll definitely be a presence there. Entertainment, I think will be huge. I'm really interested and excited about that. I mean, I've watched, I've watched live basketball games and boxing games and soccer games in, in Oculus. Um, they're not the best experiences yet. Uh, the quality hasn't been as good and you still get some latency issues and, uh, things like that. It's not as, uh, um, you're not doing as, as much communication with others, although there's forms of that. Uh, but I, as I, as we look into the future, I'm imagining that entertainment will be uh, a pretty big space, uh, for the metaverse. So I think in the same way that Netflix kind of took over and we're seeing all these big media giants of Amazon video and Apple coming out with some and things like that, I think the metaverse will have completely new or expanded uh, media companies with uh, kind of a presence where you can consume both live events and kind of TV shows and movies all in the metaverse in a virtual movie theater. And you're going to, we're going to be watching movie releases that are happening at HBO max, which we never thought would happen, right? That you're going to see something in a streaming service before you see it in a movie theater. I think we're going to see things like that. I think we'll also see a, uh, a new category of, of media instead of being in a 2D environment where you're seeing in a virtual movie theater, I think we're going to start to see movies being recorded where you can kind of control the view. You can choose in a 3D environment what angle you'd want to watch from a TV sh- TV show or movie and get kind of this this more immersive movie experience. Um, and I think there's a lot of predictions and, and uh, some players in that space now. And so it'll be interesting to see how that evolves and matures into the future. We talked about real estate and how that's already a big, a big spot. And so I think we're going to see, I think, even more, uh, more there as it relates to the, to the metaverse. You know what, Johnny, on, um, you were talking about entertainment there. You can actually, you can actually build a house at the moment, uh, insomnium. It's not easy. Uh, but you can build a house in Somnium right now, and one of the assets that you can put in there is a TV screen, and you can attach video files. So right now you can run your own movie theaters. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah you invite exactly. people in, you sit around, and <laughs> you're there, and you can do it in you know VR, or you can do it in... Um, in 2d and just watch or you know yep. videos of yourself and invite your family around and <laughs> yeah I, crazy wacky videos <laughs> with some co-workers and some friends we've done the i think it was big screen tv uh, which is on the oculus and it's a it's a movie theater and we were all just sitting there as avatars and we i think we watched a a part of the the matrix movie um just to get a sense for it and it, it was very immersive and and uh but yeah that's interesting that that's already in in and and uh Somnium. Yeah, uh, I'll have to check yeah. that out. Yeah, it's amazing. It's one, and again, it's one of those things about like it's already here, you know, but um, just not distributed yet. <laughs> exactly. We've talked about the future and what could be in the movement, the things that are already kind of happening uh, that are projecting forward, you know. And I think I remember talking about the future of of web and smartphones and social when those things came out, you know, twelve years ago. 15 years ago, and people were like not really believing what was going to happen. And here we are today, right, where it's, again, it's changed our world. And so going into the future, uh, we can only anticipate that things are going to continue to accelerate. But what are some of the next big moves that you guys see that will take things forward? Obviously, we mentioned the pandemic that sort of changed the way we work. It's changed our lives, and it's made digital kind of so much bigger. You know, the, the, the idea that 
Dudley, you mentioned that the 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 digital world, you know, could could surpass the, the you know the the economics could surpass yeah. the physical world. Mm-hmm. Economics is is still mind boggling. Yeah. Uh, but what what do you guys see as some of the next big moves that need to happen from an infrastructure perspective? You know, we think about the, how infrastructure, the cloud, for example, is changing so much of technology. Electricity or the railroad of the past, these platforms that sort of enabled change. What do we need to see from an infrastructure perspective? And what are some of the next big moves that will kind of push this space forward, push the metaverse forward? Yeah, as I think about the infrastructure, I, I think there's a lot from a hardware and software perspective that would need to happen to get us there. But as I think about from the from an infrastructure standpoint, uh, the few thoughts that come to my mind are the the need for like an ultra fast low latency internet uh you know we we talked about i mean we know that 4g internet can't handle hundreds of concurrent streams today uh and you know we're seeing a lot of mobile carriers focus on 5g and 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 i think as we get to 6g it's going to be even even better and it's going to get us to a place where we get that kind of ultra fast low latency internet so i think that's definitely a as it relates to the infrastructure piece. I also think, uh, and we're hearing a lot of companies talk about this, and we know that there's some players in this, but as it relates to the uh, blockchain and as it relates to interoperability, I think those two are, are going to be really key elements of, or areas of innovation that will need to, that, that will kind of enable a lot. Uh, again, we have players in it now, but as I think about the interop- interoperability, uh, being able to, if you're purchasing uh if again, if you're if your self-expression, right, your Gucci bag and your and your and your shoes, and you're buying those through NFT on the blockchain, then you're able to take those with you to the different verses, right? You're able to take that over to to Horizon at Facebook, or you're able to take it to Microsoft's version or Decentraland, wherever it might be that you're kind of going, um, and you can kind of take that take that with you. And I think that there are various ways that people are approaching that. Some are not in the, on the blockchain. And so it'll be interesting to see kind of more of the uh, more adoption by the bigger players uh, around the need to to kind of have that interoperability uh, part of things. But yeah, I think that's those are the kind of the immediate things that come to my mind. One of the big things I think is if you look at Gen Z culturally, they're all about collaboration. Uh, they don't want ownership of everything. They want to collaborate and they want a community that that helps. Um, it's a very different way of looking at things from uh, definitely um, uh, Gen X and 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 why that that's for sure and and boomers and that seems to have come at the same time as um, you know Satoshi's white paper in two thousand and eight on um, on crypto and what it allows you to do and what i think will really change everything is when companies start to become decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs, which sounds really complex but in the end all it is is it's the ability for a group of people who are interested in the same thing to to work together and collaborate so that the sum is is so that the whole is larger than the sum of the parts and you couldn't do that previously without crypto because you had to start a company and hand out shares and it was very difficult to do whereas your crypto it's really really easy to do so and pretty much any business i think of i think you could actually tokenize that business and that's a real head fake for people to try and get their their mind around but anything i mean if you're uh if you wanted to be a production company making content you could effectively become a, a DAO. you could have a token people could contribute to that token. So that's your funds. There could be thousands of you or hundreds of you. Um, and then the traditionally, the idea is that the people who are involved in that are in some way, you know, the producers or the directors or the actors or whatever, and they're all working together to try and collaborate and create value, which in that case, if a production company would be film or television or, or, or content or whatever, you can do that for anything. And I think that's what Jen said really wants to do. And if you can make setting up a doubt, which ain't easy, <laughs> If you can make setting that up easy, then I think you will see a huge sea change in the kinds of businesses which start. All of those businesses will have crypto at their core and will have the metaverse at their core. Tony Tran, founder at Pure Inc., is aiming to accelerate the metaverse with computing power, software, and hardware. 
He has a roadmap into 2030 that starts with the social metaverse in 2022, the ambient metaverse in 2025, and the singularity metaverse in 2030. Here's what he had to say. Hi, I'm Tony Tran with Peer Inc. And today I'll be answering questions. What does the metaverse look like 10 to 20 years from now? Well, in the simplest embodiment, the metaverse will exist as a three-dimensional expansion of the web that we know and love today. Like radio waves that's presently all around us, and we need a, some sort of an interface to actually translate that into either sound or visual or images. The metaverse content will exist everywhere and connect everything. And so it's really like a merging of the present web that we know, all of the data that's on the web, plus all of the connected devices, and then map that against the physical world. So it would create basically an environment where it's nearly like we are jacked in. We would live in a world where we're always connected to the metaverse by a wearable, which includes earbuds, smartwatches, and AR glasses that combines those two different devices into one. And then that's how we would be jacked in, sort of, in this metaverse 10 to 20 years from now. What are potential business applications for the metaverse? Well, you know, the way I see it is that the metaverse will wipe out all the inefficiencies of today's centralized ecosystem and platforms, leading to a more diversified and global marketplace boom. All the world would effectively become a bazaar without any of the physical problems of physical establishment. Productions would be centralized while the storefronts would be decentralized. For example, if I want a Thai food from a certain brand while I'm sitting at a park, I should be able to bring up that restaurant virtually and the order would be sent to the nearest production facility that the business owner has leased to make the food. Or maybe at the production facility, a robot would be making that food. And, you know, I don't think it's far-fetched to train a robot arm to make Thai food and then, you know, have in between a fulfillment or a delivery service that gets it from the facility to me at the park. And then all of the, the social media and the publishing of pictures of my food, as soon as it arrives, the images are already taken and I can just publish that right away. And those are just some potential business applications that I see, but it's just going to be a massive change in ways that we haven't even thought of. So originally when the internet first began, people didn't think that, you know, what the world would look like without all those businesses, like the phone book, for example. So how quickly all of those different things in our lives, from the camera to the telephone, all of those things come together and then ultimately powered by the pocket internet and created so many different types of businesses, that type of revolutionary change, that's what we're going to see happen with the metaverse. And the metaverse is going to be inevitability. And the reason why it's going to be an inevitability is because the web that we know today is a two-dimensional web. It's just a mass of, of pages stored on servers and then linked together by hyperlinks. When the metaverse starts to manifest itself into the real world, linking the real world with things that exist in cyberspace, the digital world, when these two worlds collide, it's going to definitely change some things. The metaverse isn't like a single thing or it's a single verse or a single company, right? It's the convergence of all these digital movements that if you look at any one of these, whether it's blockchain or NFT, they're huge, right, mm. in, in of themselves. But mm. it's the connective tissue, like the internet, that's kind of connecting mm. these things together that, that's creating these new spaces. Mm. Is that, am I correct in kind of yeah, uh, and, and recapping that? The way I would look at it is we're where we are now before there was Windows. <laughs> so right now, anybody who wants to be involved in this basically has to be a programmer, right? If you want to create your own token or a DAO or whatever, you've got to know a whole bunch of different programming languages and it's complex. But soon, to, to take part in this, there will be effectively 
like an operating system like Windows, but for um, for NFT ownership and tokenizing things. And that then means anybody can do it. And because of the utility of that technology, as in, you know, it, it, what it can do is so much better than traditional um, corporations or ownership contracts or whatever, everybody will want to use it. Everyone so, can be a creator, essentially, whereas right now it's sort of limited to to the programmers that's it. that are, yeah. you know, coding things and, and connecting things. And it, yeah. it's more like, hey, if you want to build a house, you got to hire a contractor that's going to hire a bunch of people to do that for you. But in the future, you, you're going to have the tools at your own disposal, essentially, to, to create faster. Completely. Yeah. 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 So as we get closer to kind of winding up, as we think about technology, you know, technology... If we, you know, if we look at the smartphone, it's enhanced our relationships. It's helped us be more creative, uh, you know, and, and all those applications that come along with it, the application sort of universe. It's helped us learn new knowledge. Um, but it's also, you know, it, it's also hurt some of mm-hmm. our relationships or maybe our, our, our ability to create um, or to gain new knowledge. Maybe we're consuming more versus creating. Mm-hmm. So technology can be, you know, can be used for good or bad. Um, and certainly there's so many incredible, uh, applications that we're all believers in the future of technology, but we, we want to be cognizant of how it changes us. Right. And, and, and some of the concerns as well, what sort of concerns do we need to be thinking about so that we, we err on the good side and not on the bad side as we think about the future of the metaverse? I mean, my, my biggest one here is knowing who owns the avatar. So if, if we go into the metaverse world so that a 50-year-old man can pretend to be a 12-year-old girl, then we're in big trouble. So what, what you know, we have this system we call ABC, which is every character needs to be, ownership of that character needs to be linked so that you know if A, it's an avatar of a real person and who that real person is. So this avatar of me is, is Dudley and I can go and find Dudley and I know who I'm talking to. B, it's a brand. The person who who owns this avatar is a brand and I can see that's a brand, therefore they have an agenda, they're trying to sell me something. Fine, I can suspend disbelief, but it's a brand. Or C, creator. This is an avatar made by creator, again, to make money. It's a story, you suspend disbelief. It's like a character from a TV series. If we don't do that, and what surprises me is there are some companies which talk about... Uh, um, being um, being able to be whoever you want to be and no one knowing who you are. I think they are absolutely mad. And I don't understand how they can't see how that will basically destroy society. I mean, right now with MetaHuman Creator, in the space of an afternoon, I could create a thousand different characters. I could stick a chatbot onto those characters. I could open up a thousand social media accounts and I could have those characters using an AI tool to change to change voices, but just use my voice and I could have them all spread disinformation right now. I don't know why Pete, I don't know why my governments, crazy governments aren't doing it. I can do that now. So can you imagine what's going to happen if you don't know who is behind avatars in verses? It'd be a disaster. So that needs regulation. So regulation, you know, we talk about decentralization as a key theme yeah. of, you know, an underlying aspect of, of blockchain and, you know, what you guys mentioned, Decentraland, right? Decentralization is a theme, but still regulation is an important aspect of the metaverse of the future. So a lot of the first creators that I know, the way that they are working it is you are going to have to identify who you are before you go in verse. It's still very much up in the air at the moment. But a lot of those conversations are being had. Now, there's definitely two sides to this. Um, some people want complete anonymity, but I know that will be an absolute disaster. We actually uh, built a website last year and launched it. It's called balancetech.org. And it's this kind of this resource that talks about the need to kind of balance this this connection uh, to kind of this digital, essentially being able to balance the, the the digital and the physical, and how if you're able to kind of do that and, and balance that, it really can help unlock your creative potential. But we talk right. about uh, essentially, you know, th- there's there's a lot of uh, resources out there that talk about how you know being too connected and, and the need to unplug and and some of the different uh, 
products and resources that are out there that kind of help with that. And so as I think about some of the the ugly side or the the some of the concerns of the metaverse, I think about, you know, uh, when I talked to my wife about it recently, told her I was going to do this podcast, she immediately said, oh, is, are we going to all be like Wally, where they're all just sitting in these like hover hover carts and we're all overweight and we don't even like recognize each other because we're just so in this virtual world. And I, and I hadn't even thought about that, right? I was thinking about all the the jobs it'll create, all the the new interactivity and and enhancement of the social. Um, but it's true. I think in the same way that today our technology can be a distraction, it can be generative. You know, generally it can be addictive. It can we can lose track of time. Um, it'll be hard to separate from real nature and and the real world. Uh, the the fact that you know technology can can overstimulate our senses right we talk about like blue light glasses so that you know before you go to bed turn on your dark you know your night mode so that you don't affect your sleeping right imagine having a vr headset on for eight hours a day you know and and so there, there's a lot of that kind of area as it relates to just health physical emotional you know just our 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 connectivity to things and that balance will be really, really important. I think we'll see a lot of innovation as it relates to that. We'll see the the equivalent of night modes come out, right? And and how do we can how we can kind of ramp down and in the same way that TikTok after two hours of scrolling, it'll tell you like, hey, you've been on here for a while. Are you sure you want to keep scrolling? I think we'll start to see more innovation around the kind of the interactions and the the prompts and the UX of how people kind of engage with the metaverse to help with that. But uh, it is something we'll have to be conscious about and, and we'll build, we'll enhance our balance tech.org to, to cover the metaverse as that comes. But uh, that's very cool. Yeah. And you know, the, the thing is the answers are out there for all these problems. You know, they're not insurmountable at all in any way, you know, and a lot of people talk about things completely negatively. They're not. And you, you know, one of the things I really liked about Facebook's, sorry, Meta's um, AR glasses is, you know, they're building the technology so that all of the information, stays on your hardware and the whole platform you know is being made so that your private information is on hardware that's a huge change you know when when they started you couldn't have predicted the issues but we know the issues now so the new technology i think that's brilliant you know and so there are answers to all these problems we've just got to get all the good people together and make sure that we're the ones that shout the loudest i think this one of the cool opportunities about playing in this space is being able to shape it, knowing that, hey, we're all creators and we've learned from the last 15 years. And, you know, if we can start shaping things now, then it can be for our, you know, it can err on the good and be for our mutual benefit. I def we're all big believers in connecting with technology to be more productive, to have uh, amazing experiences, to have being able to connect with people in a new way and stay connected. And we're also big believers in disconnecting. And I think one thing that's interesting about the metaverse is it's it's sort of the, the ever-present where it's you can be in, you can be out, but you can also have that hybrid yeah. where it's like you're augmenting your, your physical world. And I think that digital physical connection, I think that confluence is, is – that space in general is a growing space in so many different industries. I think the metaverse is just something that kind of encapsulates it all, right? And mm -hmm. it kind of says, hey, this is going to be more ever present in the future. As we think about this, the, the future uh, of the metaverse, um, Dudley, you've mentioned, you know, your daughter and, and Gen Z many times. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, okay, what sort of advice would you give your daughter um, knowing that, hey, this, this, uh, this, big change is coming whether whether we like it or not right things are happening the the infrastructure is in place some of the world's biggest companies are behind it um so it's coming what sort of advice would you give your daughter and johnny for you uh i want to flip it and say what sort of advice would you give your grandma who you know it, it, uh, <laughs> if you had to uh you know if you don't stay up up with some of the times, you know, with tech, then you kind of, you can stay, you end up being a little bit more disconnected, right? Um, think about if, you know, grandma or grandpa didn't have a smartphone or weren't on some of these social platforms and weren't able to kind of stay connected with their Gen Z grandkids. Yep. Um, interested in, in your thoughts, but Dudley, start with you. <laughs> well, I've got a, a four-year-old, Amadeo, and a, and a seven-year-old, Octavius, two daughters. And um, I mean, the right answer is, oh, they should do whatever it is that they really want to do. However, 
Um, knowing them, um, I would love uh, for Octavia to be involved in um, 3D modeling and creating assets, be their little fluffy toys at the moment, but later on that might be buildings, that might be cars, that might be um, space aliens or whatever, because we're going to need millions and millions and millions of them. So taking that creative skill and being able to use that is something that I think is uh, incredibly useful um, for the future. And, and certainly, you know, in a way, I wish I'd got into that a, a little bit earlier because that's that's an amazing skill for the future. Well, world creation, you know, world and creation. Asset creation. Yeah, I love the concept also of mirroring, of saying, "Hey, I've, I have this mirrored sort of version of myself or my things or my house," and maybe you amplify it in different ways. But having that, there's the nuances of mirroring. We see this in industry a lot. The, the you know digital twin or. or creating a mimic of something, and, and then you're able to simulate things or experience things yep. in those spaces. Um, but uh, being able to create that, right? Being able to create that or augment it and be yep. part of that from the get-go. And then you, then you can go either way. You can go into replicating reality if that's what you want to do and testing it, or you can go into creating something completely fantastical. You know, I mean, in, in the end, what we're what you're seeing at the moment is, is a creation of new IP. Like the Marvel of, you know, 30 years ago is effectively like the, the apes of today. Uh, like that, that is the new IP, what you're having in the, in, in the verses. And we're creating that right now. Cre we're creating a new Superman, a new Batman right now, but it's not in a magazine and in a movie. It's, it's in Decentraland. Nice. Johnny, what are your thoughts? You got the hard um, one, Jamie. Yeah, it is a little bit hard. I'd tell her to get into 3D modeling. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I think about my grandma who's in Mexico right now and how last year, I think it was last year, she was introduced finally to a smartphone instead of a, a landline, you know, where we'd have to call her to her phone that she still kind of had connected to the wall, didn't even own a cell phone. And I think about all the techn technological advancements that she's been through in her lifetime, right? Think about everything that's come since, uh, you know, she's in her late 70s right now. I think uh, she, might, she might be in her 80s now. But um, so she was introduced to the smartphone last year. And of course, now she comments on everyone's Facebook and everyone's Instagram. Uh, she'll also send little messages. She's now, this year, she started with emojis. Uh, so, you know, she's overboard on the emoji side of things, like everyone's grandma. Um, so as I think about <laughs> this future of the metaverse, um, I think you kind of you kind of said it as part of your question, Jeff, but I think I think uh, it'll be a connection to her family. I think about my kids growing up and their kids, you know, and uh, and I think that it, it'll be another opportunity to connect. I think that what's really exciting about the metaverse is that um, although it be, will be a digital or a virtual kind of uh, environment, it's a way for us to almost feel like we're there physically. Um, and so I would love to be able to see my grandma and pop on a VR headset and have her be there and have a very ergonomic and consumer friendly and easy to use VR headset that she could just click one button and be able to talk to my kids and see them and see how their school was and be able to, to kind of be a part of their lives and be more connected. And so I think that as we think about the metaverse, people think that we're going to be less social. We're going to be asocial. And I think that it's an enhancement on our social connections. And so I would, I would say that I would have my grandma adopt it and I'd help her set it up and hope that I, we can, you know, like, uh, to your point about the, uh, Jeff, about shaping the future. Uh, Abraham Lincoln said the best way to predict the future is to create it. So I hope that we can be part of that creation to make it friendly for my grandma to be able to push a button and connect to my, you know, to my kids. And so that's kind of where my, my thinking goes. And you know, you know, Johnny, on that, it, it reminds me of a number of conversations I have with people who are basically frightened of, uh, they're frightened of VR, basically, or mixed reality and saying that things are bad enough with the mobile phone and social. And my point to them is always, actually, when you're on social, you're actually never present. You're never properly engaged. You are responding to something with only part of your presence and part of your mind. You are not giving someone your full attention ever. 
unless you're doing a video chat, right? <laughs> and when and my point is, we would be much healthier, actually, if we were doing no social, and we were actually doing VR and video chats, we would be that much more connected as humans, we would understand each other more, we would get more value, more emotional value. Um, and when I say it like that, some people go, eh, maybe you're right. People just conflate it with social all the time. And it's not. I love that concept of being present. Uh, and I think we get together with family members and so often it's like we're kind of only half present with these mobile phones and the technology is narrowed to these super smart devices that are so small. But I think the future is is expanding where, you know, things it's like it's hidden, right? It's in our contact, contact lens, like you said, or it's in our glasses and yeah. it's contextual. Um, and it's sort of on demand, but it's also it, that it gives us that ability to, to, to be present. I love that concept as we think about the, the benefits. And also, Johnny, bringing grandma, you know, in the room <laughs> and, and having more experiences with the grandma and your kids. That sounds like that sounds amazing. Um, Dudley, we want to wrap up with you. A very important question. You said ADD is your superpower. Yeah. So tell us more about that. I know, you know, a lot of us struggle with ADD, especially in the tech world. Yeah. Um, tell us more why it's your superpower. <laughs> well, I very much went into it and tried to understand the, the neuroscience behind it so that I could create ways of helping me, uh, and understand the things which were difficult and why they were difficult. And one of the key things that I found was, apart from the fact that you have uh, – you know, prefrontal cortex or an executive mind functioning that has very difficulty with a beginning, a middle and an end. And you have no sense of time, <laughs> which is just difficult in and of itself. The other thing that is incredibly helpful for looking at the future or future proofing or future gazing <clears throat> is that you, you don't really have any filters. So traditionally, as a, a neural, normal person, you filter everything out. <clears throat> and you only focus on what you want. Yeah, when you have ADD, you don't have any filters, depending on the level of it. And I certainly have none. And what happens is if something is different or if something is bubbling, I notice it straight away. And the more it bubbles, the more I notice it. So whatever that thing is, it means that you have a visceral awareness of it before the rest of the population. And then you're, if you're curious and you start looking at it then you start to connect and associate that to how the future could work. So your associative brain is also not hemmed in. You jump between all the different parts of your brain going backward and forward, which is terrible for sleeping. But in terms of connecting and creating, it's also a big advantage. So I do see it as my superpower because I notice things that other people just don't. Thank you for that and for, and for connecting with anyone who does have ADD and maybe ADD will be a superpower in the metaverse as we're thinking about absorbing and creating, you know, all these different experiences and, and, and uh, d different worlds and different aspects that, that combine the digital physical realms. Loved uh, being with you too, and kind of hearing your insights and expertise um, about the future uh, of the metaverse. Um, thank you. And, as battle tested, you know, evangelists and leaders, um, it's great to have you guys also share your insights on, you know, both sides, like how, the benefits of this and also, you know, the ethics of how we can, the importance of shaping it or regulating it so that it is a, a, a true benefit to humanity. Again, thanks for being here on the future of. And thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. You, are, you're, you and your work is, is legendary, and it's been a real honor. So thank you. And Johnny, you're not too bad either. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. It was, it was great to learn with you all and excited to see how uh, we can come back on this topic in 10 to, what did we say, 24 years and uh, see how much of this was accurate and how it's, uh, how it's advanced. We'll but definitely get some time. stuff wrong, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Hang out with grandma in a yeah. new way. Let her go dance a little bit, you know, yep. swim in the underwater world and then hang out with the grandkids in the afternoon. There Beautiful. You go. <laughs> the Future of Podcast is brought to you by Fresh Consulting. To find out more about how we pair design and technology together to shape the future, visit us at freshconsulting.com. Make sure to search for The Future of an Apple Podcast, Spotify, 
Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any of our future episodes. And on behalf of our team here at Fresh, thank you for listening.